Welcome to Modig Machine Tool here in Sweden. If you can't tell from my chill bumps, it's a little bit cold, but I'm excited as well. So who knows, it could be for both. But I want to walk you through the factory here in Sweden, Kalmar, Sweden. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful facility. So we're gonna go inside and celebrate 75 years of Modig Machine Tool. David, it is so good to see you, my friend, and it's Glad always a pleasure. Let's talk about the history of Modig. Yeah, so it started in 1947, and it's, uh, like you say, 75 years now, and my, my grandmother started, or grandfather started the company, actually, and uh, when, uh, when she, uh, or he passed away, um, my grandmother took over, and unfortunately, she passed away, and my dad took over. Uh, she's, he's still alive, so that's good. Uh, he's a big supporter to me, and uh, he uh, yeah, gave me the, the opportunity to take over the factory and 15 years ago, maybe now, and it's, it's been a great, great journey. What time frame was it when you got your first machine sale in the U.S.? And if I'm mistaken, please correct me, but at that time, not a whole lot of English was being spoken oh, in your family. No, no, no. And you were running around trying to figure yeah. out who's going to sell this machine. We got a call from the U.S. Yes, what yes. was that like? No, so that, was, that story is when we had a, a big, uh, big aerospace company contacting us from the U.S. And uh, nobody really knew at that time uh, uh, how to speak English. And uh, <laughs> it was uh, quite dramatic uh, until we really knew what was going on. So it was, uh, it was a nice story. One of the things I like most about you are your stories and your personality, but that was when we started for the aerospace side of things. But yep. you started high-speed machining even before that, didn't you? Yeah, 1986 uh, was the first high-speed machine we developed. It was hard to um, to convince people at that time. You know, things were progressing and uh, you made parts so much faster and it was almost like science fiction. Uh, people didn't really believe in this uh, this thing. And nowadays it's like buying a car with a steering wheel more or less. It's everyone has it and that was the start of the journey. So without further ado, let's take the audience into the shop and talk more about this machining, shall Absolutely. we? Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about you selling machines on napkins and designing machines on napkins. Is this part of your process as well, David? Yeah, that's that's how we do it here, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been, uh, we, uh, the family Modig uh, in generation has had a very, uh, it's been in our blood, the machine tool industry. And uh, when you go out to shops and you see different things that's not really working well, uh, you see new things that may need to be developed and that has been the story a couple of times We made a sketch for a big customer on a paper on a napkin like you say and they say okay We, we like it and uh, we suddenly we have an order and uh, off we go You know, I think that showcases the passion that you have to literally grab a napkin and start drawing on it Yeah in order to either create or sell a machine yes. because but you also will create replicas of a one-to-one -one size made out of wood. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> yeah, you, you can only see as much, uh, you know, in a, in a TV screen or in a computer screen. It, you have to have the real one-to-one -one scale and you can be touch it and move it around, and especially when you make something new. And this doesn't happen very, I wouldn't say very often, but maybe once every five, four or five years. Uh, but then we make a full replica and then when we're all done, we have a bonfire after one. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. I hope yeah. I'm invited to that as well. What do these unique characteristics of these machines offer the audience who is right now just learning about Modig? I would say if you should buy our machines, you need to have a, an open mindset. Uh, these machines are not the standard product. Uh, I mean, it's standard for us, but c uh, compared to commodity machines. So we have to have a, an open mind on how to uh, run the Ferrari. Uh, so you have to be able to know where where the gas pe pedal is and uh, be be able to um, challenge yourself because the machines are designed so they can handle the cutting loads, the, the speeds and feeds and all the things everyone is talking about. And we have some of the biggest customers in aerospace uh, all around the world. And, and also now the automotive is, is fairly well covered, I would say, with the, with the extrusion machines we have. So uh, exciting. Uh, we're not extremely big company, but we have very big customers and they rely on the success of uh, our partnership. So we're, we're very happy with that. We have a new machine coming as well. It's an yep. inverted machine. And you've already mentioned aerospace, you've mentioned automotive, but this machine is gonna take you more into the general audience that's watching right now and allow exactly. you to kind of work closer with them as well, right? Yes. I mean, you, you look at our industry and there is a lot of good machine tool builders out there and you need to uh, you know, diversify from, from what they have. 
and this is one way and uh, also the benefits that it brings uh, to the table, obviously. Uh, and also for the company itself, it's, uh, it's important for us to not just have the, how do you say, the, uh, the special machine, which is, like I said, standard for us, but you need to have a platform where you can have a, a higher volume of output. So that's really, I mean, the goal for the company is to, to have a more steady income of, uh, of revenue. And also the, the machines themselves, they talk, I would say, they're something different and something really nice. But I think we need a new background as well because they also are world record holders. But I want the machine behind us so I can show you exactly how this world record was broken. And you did it with this tool. Let's talk about that world record breaking moment. Yeah, that's actually a tool from Seiko, our partners. We, uh, we have achieved some really good cheap removal rates on this one. Um, so in the aerospace, there is a lot of demands for high material removal. This machine is now at 1,200 cubic inches per minute, which is about 21 liters, 20, 20 and a half liters. So it's, it's uh, something really, really amazing. You're filling an, an oil barrel of chips per minute, roughly, uh, with a machine like this. If I remember correctly, for the audience watching right now, when they invest in a molded product like a Ridge Mill, it's typically to about 40 to 50 percent faster than anything else is going on out there. Is that, are those true numbers? Yeah, and a lot of people don't believe in it, obviously, because there's so many good machine tool builders out there and uh, they don't like hearing this. Uh, but so what we've done is uh, many times uh, putting a performance guarantee on the machines, uh, saying that, let's say your part was one hour, we'll make it in 30 minutes. Otherwise, you don't need to, to buy the machine if we're, you know, we fail. Uh, and that has worked. We haven't failed yet and uh, I hope we will keep on going. That is one heck of a guarantee. Is there any message that you'd like to offer the audience as a closing statement? Of course, investing in Modig is investing in a family. Uh, so we care very much about our customers and also making sure that uh, you get to what you paid for. So uh, it's, uh, for me, uh, the most important thing. I have my name on the machine, so if the customer doesn't like what they have, it hurts very much.